Hello everybody and welcome back to the Hilltop Pillbox here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. And yes, it's been a bit of a while here. We've had a lot of stuff going on and not the least of which is a uh, massive amounts of snow and ice. And uh, today it's actually raining and it's up to uh, plus three now centigrade. I believe that's about 37, 38 Fahrenheit. So today we're going to give you here, it's uh, it's Christmas Eve, going to give you a uh, an Axis and Allies revised solo game and we're going to give this a good whirl here today and I haven't played this one that often recently. I used to play it years ago and it's, uh, it's good to come back to the old familiar ones sometimes. So wish me luck, we're going to go for it here today. We're playing with... Uh, our good friend Triple Crown's hit dice that he made and gave to me, including this neato uh, tray to hold it. We'll be using Historical Board Gaming's Global War 36 uh, dice tray. And we're also using some other things from Historical Board Gaming. That's these neato uh, combat and non-combat arrows, just to make sure that we move the right amount and remember... To do the right things because I tell you sometimes especially in these games that aren't quite as sweeping if you don't make the right move at the right time it can really set you back might not be a game breaker but it might put you on your heels for a little while so we're going to try to avoid that and as you know playing solo is very challenging right very challenging because I don't really want either side to win I just want to play a good game not make any mistakes and just let the dice do their thing as we know dice Sometimes can be a little fickle. So for today, the overall idea of the Axis will be to take Moscow. That's going to be the goal of the game. Now, of course, the goal of the game, as we come over here, are, is the Victory City chart. I haven't set up the, uh, the chits on here, but essentially you get 8, you have a minor victory, 10 for a major, and 12 for a total. Well, the Axis start with 6, which means they only need 2. I mean, both sides start with 6 of 12, right? So we're going to be definitely trying to take uh, Moscow. But by taking Moscow, you typically will have had to take Leningrad and or... Uh, well, I guess Stalingrad's not on this one. But Leningrad and uh, Calcutta are also typically on the chopping blocks for that. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what uh, transpires. But with only 12 cities on the map... And a couple of them across oceans from the Axis. Of course, I'm speaking of Washington, D.C. and Los Angeles. Usually it's San Fran in most of these games. But this old one, of course, is the City of Angels. And so those are typically uh, very difficult to get to. And the U.K.'s two cities are Calcutta and London, of course. And, uh, yeah. So there's not really an awful lot that's uh, easy pickings right off the bat. Uh, if there is one that is typically taken, if my memory serves, uh, Calcutta is one and Leningrad is the other. And that, that gives you your eight for your minor victory. That seems a little too easy for us. So we are going to say that we're going to try to go for the uh, city of Moscow. I don't know if I'll play to 10 cities. If I get to 10 uh, without Moscow, I'll probably call that a win for the Axis. But that means that uh, something very weird has happened. Uh, because that means that I will have taken London, likely, or Washington or L.A. So, anyway, wish me luck. Here we go. We're going to get this game going, and who knows how it will turn out. Soviets get to go first. Let's see what they do. And round one is done. Headed to round two, and we'll start in the Pacific here. And the Japanese were able, of course, to sink their teeth into the American fleet around Hawaii, which consisted, of course, of just a sub and a carrier with one fighter. And they received uh, two hits in their attack, so they had to lose the Japanese sub. And of course, the battleship took the one hit first. Uh, oh, haven't put the American build on. Yeah, we're going full Pacific right now, and you'll see why in a second here. So... We spent uh, 40 of our 42. Anyway, uh, Japanese uh, had some success up here. Lost one man taking Baracha from the Soviets. 
and built themselves a uh, bomber as well as a factory in French Indochina. And nothing else happened down here. The British came across. Didn't load anything up here, though, because, as you know, the carrier starts here for Japan. And uh, it's easy picking. So I didn't want to end up losing uh, a loaded transport. So we're going to send him over to Africa. You can see the Japanese did take care of the British fleet here and did not suffer a single loss, not even a hit on the battleship. The British built a factory here in India and flew in the fighter from the carrier knowing that the Japanese are going to attack it and it likely would just be lost to really no purpose so we sent him to India hopefully it'll be enough to hold on it looks like India will have enough they'll be able to build three units there this next turn before the Japanese can do any real damage to it but of course they can't really do much to the French Indochina factory so this will probably be a bit of a slow build up. The Americans tried an attack. Two infantry and the fighter from China into Quang Tung versus one Japanese infantry. First round the Japanese got a hit. America did not. Second round America got a hit but so did the Japanese. So we lost two infantry and I figured I'd move the plane back to Sakang for a little bit of protection up here on the eastern front. Yes, the Germans are knocking on the door again. Uh, the Russians were able to take West Russia, of course, uh, but they were swept aside by the vaunted Wehrmacht. Up north, Leningrad fell quite easily. It's actually quite difficult to reinforce Karelia in this game, Leningrad, that is. And uh, I decided to just let it die on the vine there instead of trying to keep it. And you can see the Caucasus now has a nice stack of eight or nine infantry, and the fighters are down there as well. With no real danger from any sort of meat shields here, we'll probably be taking out West Russia uh, with some authority here, and uh, hopefully that'll be enough to thwart any plans of the northern arm of the German forces in the Soviet Union. A little surprise over here, the British were able to take Western Europe and didn't suffer any losses. You can see there's two battleships there, so we had two bombards. There were only three German units in there. I kind of messed up a little bit, I think. I brought two of the tanks uh, over to the Balkans here, uh, wanting to put more pressure on Moscow, of course, and I only left three infantry in Europe with the AA gun, of course. But as you know, the AA guns in this game uh, just stick around. Um, that's how we play it anyway. I actually haven't even opened up the rule book in a few years, so maybe the, maybe the AA gun's supposed to die. But we're going to just play it the way uh, we've always been playing it, and AA guns just stick with the winner of the battle, and it can be moved on the following non-combat round. The British built a destroyer here, because there are still two German subs. The transport and the destroyer were taken out. But the transport and destroyer each got hits on the first round. Yes, the one got a hit. Knocked out two Royal Air Force uh, Spitfires, wiped them out, and that is it. So the British have no fighter cover at home, but there are no transports, so there's really no sea lion possibility. Down in Africa, the Germans were able to take Anglo-Egyptian Sudan for the loss of one, I believe, infantry. And uh, pretty good dice all around for the Axis on, uh, during this first turn. Uh, except up here, they didn't get a single hit defending Western Europe. Go figure. Uh, here, uh, again, they didn't get very good. Maybe I shouldn't have said they had good dice. But they, <laughs> they seem to have pretty good dice when it really mattered. Uh, of course, Africa, is it really worth fighting over? I guess we're going to find out as time goes on. America built nothing here, so got to be careful. There is one German transport likely won't make it all the way across the Atlantic to cause any sort of grief. That's round one, folks. Round two coming up. Russians have a lot down south, but not much up north. Will that cost them? We'll let you know. All right, round two is in the books, headed to round three. And in the Pacific... Japanese have decided to regroup back in their home waters 
far away from the Americans who decided to stay far away because the Japanese now have quite a bit of stuff within range of the Hawaiian Islands, uh, except to transport, so that's handy. Their transports are down here. Yes, they bulked up French Indochina in order to stave off the British in the following round. So, as you can see, they each have three tanks, but the Japanese certainly have far more punch with three fighters and a decent stack of infantry. I think they've just got one more infantry than the British do, so not a huge advantage, but the fighters tilt the scales. And there's a couple more up here that could come down and join the party. Uh, over here in Africa, yes, the Germans did expand out and grabbed a few more territories. But the Americans, sweeping across the north through Kazarine and uh, headed on towards El Alamein. I guess the British aren't there anymore, so they're going to head over there and try to win one for the Allies up here. The Soviets had some success in West Russia, and the Germans decided to ignore them and just moved on and took Archangel uh, with five units and uh, have stacked up a good stack of tanks. I believe there's seven tanks and a couple infantry down here in Ukraine. Now, something interesting happened here. We had two things happen. There used to be a lone German infantry here. So the British bomber in Russia flew over, was going to knock it out, a bit of a can opener for the Soviets, and they missed, and the infantry hit and shot down the bomber. So I thought, well, it can't happen twice. So I brought the American bomber from the UK, flew it over, and we had success, and of course landed in Moscow. But Moscow is definitely under threat, so I'm not sure if sending tanks this way just to try to get after some of these nice expensive planes would be a good use of time because uh, time is running out I think here for Moscow not much left that might be one of those hunker in the bunker times uh, Japanese only have a few units nothing that's a real threat but the Germans have about well probably end up having about 30 units there in two turns and I'm not sure if the Soviets are going to be able to field that much so uh, might become uh, important for the British to start sending some help north, but of course they don't want to lose India and give a nice shiny factory to the Japanese on the southern border of the USSR. Uh, over here, the uh, American fleet withdrew from 12, went back home. We built another transport and destroyer and some boys and some already going to come back here and try to make an American nuisance of themselves. The German sub remains up here, uh, nice and healthy, because you can see the British fleet is gone. But it cost the Germans uh, two fighters, a bomber, and two subs to take out the two battleships, uh, transport, a destroyer, and a Russian sub. So, while costly for the Germans, uh, the British now are back to square one. And they saved most of their money except for the three tanks here and built one more man there just to have two transports full. Probably build a couple of transports here next turn uh, and uh, probably a destroyer just because this thing's lurking here. We're going to see what he does this next round. He kind of gets lost though. I might put him there because he kind of gets lost in the, in the artwork. Well, looking pretty good for the Axis right now. Losing a little bit, gaining a little bit here. A uh, bit of a static war going on there. This is basically an uneasy, not a truce, but uh, an, an uneasy moment here in the war. Neither side wants to get within shooting range of the other. So, not sure a lot's going to happen there. I don't think it would be very wise for either side to get too close. But, over here, yeah... Not exactly sure what I should do here. Could easily take out this, threatening that, but we've got five more tanks here. We've got the seven tanks here. I don't know. We do have some good units down here, though. Got a couple of fighters and uh, six other units. So we'll see what the Russians do here. I'm really debating on whether to get really aggressive and just hammer out on stuff and hopefully get some good dice roll just to give it enough time for the Americans and the British to get over to the continent again 
and start to pull German interests westward. Time will tell, though. Here comes round three. We'll see what we see. All right, round three is done and uh, had some interesting things go on here. Things are looking a little brighter for the Allies, but definitely not out of the woods and actually did have a, a fairly bad loss. So we're going we're gonna to walk you through it here. As you can see, the Americans have poured a bit more money here into the Pacific and are trying to uh, get the Japanese a little unhinged. But that could be difficult because... Dun -dun -dun -dun, yes, Calcutta has fallen and uh, it fought hard, but the Japanese just had too much and uh, only... Uh, well, they lost all of their infantry, lost eight infantry going in. The anti-aircraft actually had seven shots and hit nothing. So that's unfortunate. Uh, not much up here. The Japanese have inched closer. The Americans have brought a couple of fighters into Moscow to hopefully stem the tide. As you can see, the Russians punched out. And yes, they did okay. Took care of that stack there and came and took care of the big stack of tanks in Ukraine. And then it was taken back. But uh, not too many tanks left for the Germans. Only four left there in Europe and one in Africa. Uh, but they do have a good stack of meat shields going on here that are going to be heading eastwards. But the Soviets have a little bit of time now. A little bit of time. Although this is going to certainly be a problem. Six tanks per turn making their way up. So uh, definitely the clock is ticking on the Allies. But the attacks by the Soviets uh, were fairly successful. You can see they're all out of tanks now and only have the one artillery left in Archangels. So uh, not looking really great, but if they can maybe get rid of the Novosibirsk contingent and start uh, heading out this way, that might get the Japanese to turn around a little bit. On this end of things, the Germans built up a couple of subs here. And wanting to put some pressure here. You can see the American contingent is gone. Uh, the Germans did a, an attack and knocked it down just till one tank left for the Americans. Who on their turn tried an attack here and failed. The lone artillery was able to destroy the American Sherman. Not much else going on up here. But the Americans had to bulk up. So placed a battleship up here. In order to escort this group across. Because at this time. The Germans can hit it with a battleship. Three subs and two fighters. So when the Americans come over. That's a lot of firepower they're going to have to endure. Uh, so might be another turn to wait. Maybe head north and threaten up top. Um, that's going to be a game time decision as it were. But the British brought their infantry from Union to South Africa up here and dropped it off in Persia and have decided to uh, see if they can't stall things a little bit. But it's going to be a very difficult uh, row to hoe for the Allies. Not impossible, um, but the British are definitely going to have to get something done up north here along with their American allies. All right, round four coming up. We know Moscow's probably safe for a couple of rounds here, but will it be enough? Round four is done. Headed on to round five, and wow, it's the momentum in this game is just an interesting thing. So I decided to sortie out the Americans out here into the middle of the Pacific to see what the Japanese will do with that. Might take a poke, we'll see, because we still have our auxiliary backup fleet here. Uh, the Japanese are starting to crank out tanks, as they can do when they don't have any real natural uh, enemies, and that's why, that's a good reason I, I did that. Uh, the Russians are getting kind of thin here, getting kind of thin, and the Japanese are now backing up the, the Germans. So, yeah. Looks like a minor victory uh, will be coming here very shortly. Um... I guess they already have the minor victory because they have Calcutta and Leningrad. But uh, remember, we were going for Moscow. That was the whole goal here. Uh, not much to really say here. Uh, the Russians were able to get, dispatch the 
small Japanese contingent in Novosibirsk, uh, but it cost them five infantry, uh, and so do, or four infantry uh, doing so. Um, probably going to hunker in the bunker here. That'll give them at least at least two more rounds to build up. If they try to stay in the Caucasus and build here, they'll likely lose everything this round, and then they'll only have whatever they've been building in Moscow. But if we can get the fighters back and these four men, yeah, they might be able to hold on a little bit longer for some help to arrive. Well, how will help arrive in time? Well, we're not sure it will. But we've got the Americans up here, six units, and the British are going to be able to bring four units. That's ten units that the Germans will have to contend with, landing somewhere here. They could land anywhere from Norway down to France. And uh, the British could, in fact, go way north up and take Karelia. Um, so that could be a problem. But we do have some fast movers here in Germany. Now the Germans, again, they've got uh, two subs and a battleship here and a couple of fighters, plus the other subs. So... C-Zone 12 was just not a smart decision. Even with a battleship and two destroyers, I figured they get some lucky hits and this the American fleet just gets sunk. In a, not a last ditch effort, but in some sort of an effort to get some help over to the Russians, I built four American fighters. Uh, not sure how they're going to get over there in time because it's going to take a turn to get to the UK and then the UK will have to land up here somewhere and have the Americans land and then get there and I think by then it could be curtains but hey got to try something and they are faster than building up boats I think I split my money a bit too much with the Americans in this game now the game's not over yet but I mean good grief we've got all these Japanese tanks getting built uh, the fleet here is really under no threat. In fact, it's probably going to attack the Americans unless it's complete disaster. Uh, even if they don't kill the American fleet, there are two battleships in there, but even if it doesn't kill it, I suspect it's going to whittle it down to a much more manageable level. And, hey, why not build six? Uh, can they build six? I think they build, like, uh, they made 40 this turn. So they have... They save 16, so they have 56 bucks to spend next round, and they could build that all in subs. That's uh, seven subs, I believe. So, yeah, just to, just to have some fun there. But lots of dice to be rolled before that happens. But really looking like an Axis victory here, and with the solitary, let's go get Moscow. Not spending much in the water over here for the Germans, and uh, not even on air power. Uh, everything's been ground pounder stuff, just slugging it out with the Russians. All right, round five coming up, and we'll see how many Huns are on the gates of Moscow, or how many Japanese are on the gates of Moscow, because I suspect there's going to be a few of them as well. Going to be crowded. All right, well, that glimpse of hope for the Allies is quickly fading. They did have some success here. The Japanese did a headlong charge into them, but uh, lost everything here in Season 56 except for a battleship and a destroyer, which retreated and were summarily dispatched. And the Americans ended up losing uh, a submarine and a destroyer. So the Japanese fleet is rather small, uh, but they have a ton of cash that they will be spending on uh, everything that they need to to protect the homeland. Right now, there's only two American units there that can actually threaten Tokyo. So we'll see where that goes this next turn. Soviets, a uh, little cheeky, took $1 off there, but they are completely surrounded here uh, by all of their enemies, well, both of their enemies. Getting a little bit of help from the Americans. Uh, but the Japanese bombers came by three of them. One got shot down, but two of them put in, I believe that's ten damage, nine damage, I forget the number now, but lots of damage. So the Soviets, who have uh, $19, are going to be spending about half of that on repairs. The uh, Germans have about 17 units in range. The Japanese have... Uh, about 20 units in range. So I think this could be the last round. We'll show you the battles as they happen. Um, the Americans and British have come over, I think, a day late and a dollar short, though. 
but they have made it over here. Could have come all the way to Archangel, but here they're still threatening Berlin, so Germany will have to build substantial ground forces to protect Berlin, as there are 10 Allied forces there. Uh, the German fleet is out of range of everybody right now, and there is no German unit in Algeria, otherwise could have taken a poke there, but there are four fighters here in Washington. So that's where we are now. Things are uh, looking pretty grim. When it's time for this battle, though, we'll show it to you. Here we go. As promised, here's the first battle for Moscow. I really don't think the Germans are going to win this one. Uh, this is going to be a fairly convincing Soviet victory, I believe. But this is why we roll the dice, right? You just never know. We're going to start with the anti-aircraft. So we have three German planes coming in. And here's the anti-aircraft. Oh, well, it's starting well for the Ruskies. So one German fighter is gone. Check him over there. All right, so here we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine at one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here we go, nine at one. Youch. All right, well, we're not taking that for a casualty, but the venerable B-17 is going to go back that way. So that's one, two, three, four. Wow. And that's just the ones. But there's not many units here, so. The threes. We have one, two, three, four, and we have nine total. Would have had 10, but we got 9. Alright, so we have 9 at 3. Okay, that's about right on the bubble there. So we got 5 hits. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Put that there. And uh, I should have rolled the... Should have rolled the bomber at the same time, but that's eh, more dramatic. Oh, and a miss. That makes up for all those ones that got hits. All right, so the American bomber. No joy. It's just going to die. All right, now we've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. we got 24 at 2, so we're going to roll 8 three times. 8 dice three times. Here we go. First roll. Three. Second roll. Two. So we got five so far. And the last roll. Seven. Well, a little bit below, I think. Not much. But one, two, three. Four, five, six. Seven. So there's still two German infantry there. Although I think the fighters should take care of them. Of course, how many times have I said that? And then uh, epic fail. But we've got four defending fighters. All right, took care of them and one tank. All right. So there we go. And that is all we got left. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight at three. And one at four. We'll roll them all at the same time. Here, this is the entire German attack. Oh, it's a good one. Looks like we got seven hits. Seven hits. Oh, well, we got to get these out of the way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits. All right. So we got seven. They're gone. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Something seems wrong there. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I think I counted. I think I gave one extra dice to the uh, defense last time, but that's okay. So we have 16, right? 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, we got 16. So we'll do 8 twice. Here we go. 8 twice. 2. 3. Now that's not very good. 1, 2. And three. 
All right, we'll carry on. So we've got one, two, three, four, five at three, and one at four. Oh, wait. Maybe I should roll the uh, fighters in defense too, eh? Maybe I should do that. I carried away. Ooh, yeah, that takes care of all the tanks. <laughs> all right. Well, that'll make it easy to do the next roll. One of four, one of three. There's no tomorrow. Here we go. All right, one hit. Just take that one off, I guess. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine at two. Just need two hits. Okay, well, that's eight dice, no hits, no hits. Wow. All right, well, the fours should come through, right? Yeah, it came through huge. All right, so that's it for the Germans. Unfortunately, the Russians don't have much left here. And I don't think the British can get anything over there in time to help. So what we're going to do, we're just going to set this up and do the Japanese attack. That's that's what we're going to do. Just We're just going to keep rolling here, folks. It's the magic of film. And I realize that nothing is ever for certain, but I am feeling as though this is a done deal. So we've got 12 tanks. We've got two bombers. And we've got six fighters. Now, one or two of these planes will likely get shot down. But even if they do, I think this is all over but the crying. So we got six fighters. We got, so we got 20 units all punching pretty high. So, But here we go. The anti-aircraft gun will fire again. Eight aircraft. Oh, things do not look good. Things do not look good. We'll start with the bombers. Well, <laughs> this is a black hole of hits over here. So we got 18 at three. So we're gonna roll nine dice twice. Nine dice twice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ten total. Well, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll kill the Yanks. Nine, ten. All right. If those bombers had gotten hits, that'd be it. But they didn't. So. We've got eight at two, eight at two. That's not going to do it. And we got four at four. Well, the fours have been pretty hot, I got to tell you. A couple of stacks of chips there. All right, but we are down to just two units left. So we're going to try our bombers here for the Japanese, see if they're going to wake up here. Well, one of them did. And we got a ton of threes. Yeah, okay. So that's it, folks. Moscow has fallen. We'll let them do their defense. Oh, only one this time. Yeah, we'll let them shoot down a bomber. But that leaves us with... Six Japanese tanks, a ton of fighters, which we could even set way up there, and a bomber we'll put in a little bit more of a protected area right there, and then of course all of these guys are going to move up. Probably should have killed that guy, but that's it for the Soviets, and that's it for the game, folks. Uh, I just don't see the, the Allies now being able to uh, conduct any sort of business here. Now that the Germans can focus entirely on Britain and the Japanese can fo focus entirely on America after they kill this guy. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for, play for watching, folks. Uh, Christmas Eve is upon us. And uh, I'm going to head out, brave this wonderful, wonderful weather, and uh, get the family together to have a nice meal tonight. Watch a nice movie. I think we're going to watch uh, Miracle on... No. What are we going to watch? It's a Wonderful Life. We're going to watch that one tonight. And uh, it is a wonderful life, folks. Yes, we all have trials. We all have struggles. 
We all have those things that we uh, that push us, that test our, our limits and our boundaries and our attitudes. I just uh, I wish all the best for you, and I pray that we can all just have a great holiday season, uh, Christmas Day, New Year's, and all the travels. Stay safe, folks. Be safe. Be blessed. And until next time, folks, hug your loved ones, especially now here at the uh, the Christmas season. Hug your loved ones. Thank all your friends for playing. Hopefully you're getting together with them. And as always, may those dice be with you. <laughs>